Hi everyone, I'm Ronan Unchained. Episode 3, Betrayed of Secret Invasion. It's been 2 for 2. Amazing episodes, in my opinion. Last week's was just pound for pound scenes, especially with between Talos and Nick, and between Rhodey and Fury. Just, oh, let's see what's happening in this week's story. They are cooking up Super Scrolls. Super ourselves. <laughs> we no longer just change faces. We change powers. We're going to be uniquely programmed weapons of mass destruction. Wow. All of us. Super squads. <laughs> they just flat out said it. 1998. Wow. We're still in the past. Wow. This should put Dracov's men on their heels. Looks like they already have. Dracoffs. Is that reference to to the Black Widow? The face of yours. I'm thinking I may take up revenge. Whew. You been in touch with Graphic while I was gone? And why are you asking me that? Because I just need to be sure. About what? Who you become while I was gone. I became a widow in your absence. Oh. I wept on your pillow every night. I grieved for you. And just when I thought I had gotten past the heartbreak, you came back in the blip. And silly me, I thought we were going to undo all the pain together. Go back to the way we were, but no. You just up and vanished again. Only this time it was voluntary. Ugh. So, if you're interested in who I became in your second absence, I became me. The me I was before you. What other choice was there when you kept disappearing as if you were never really here in the first place? What is this painting? <laughs> it's remarkable, isn't it? Gathering up all these big men for one painting. Statesman of World War One. That's what it's called. I mean, it just sums up the whole thing pretty nice, I'd say. Which whole thing is that? Well, you know, the difference between statesmen and soldiers. You see, because one lot spends the war posing for pictures, while the other does all the killing and the dying. I mean, look at the fat, smug smile on his face. You ask me, Talos, choice between having my story told in ink and oil paint, or having it written in blood. I choose blood all day long. Yours and everyone else's, huh? Yeah. Brave. You asked for parley, so let's parley, shall we? Come on. Oh. <laughs> Holy. What I want is for you to stand down and stop murdering innocent humans. You know, I would be doing us both a favor. I just put you up your misery right there. You want an honor, mate? Right, go ahead. Say the word. An honor me thing. Well, it wouldn't be proper, would it? The general challenging his subordinate to knives. Are you honestly puzzled as to why the council would prefer me as general over the likes of you? Guys in the car. Wanna come say hello? You wanna be very, very careful now. You should be grateful that I haven't sent that back to you in a body bag yet. Yeah, this was some of the teaser, yeah. Ugh. He's not safe. That's what this is all about, isn't it? You're gonna take out people. To the edge of extinction with a war with the human. All these miscreants know is murder. Look how they treat each other. That's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna murder them all. You don't understand the first thing about humans. They're at their most. 
most formidable when they're threatened by a common foe. Have you forgotten how we fight? Do you think I'm going to let you continue this war under the cover of anonymity? You're very much mistaken. I'm going to tell every army on Earth who it is that's attacking them. You'll lose the element of surprise. You and your rebels will be put down like the rabid dogs you are. Then you'll be the author of our people's extermination. That's where you're wrong, because you see, they will see the difference between us. Because we will show them, we who haven't been infected by your sickness. So that guy stays with me, though, is it? Now, until the end of time, my daughter's name stays out of your mouth. You got it? Damn, he's already been... Scene. Oh, I'm sorry. No. You know, you told me that you got a line on a scroll that's up in the US government, and you, I know that it's understood that you think that implies that I should just sort of leap up and take this opportunity to just help you like that. That's as it gone. So I'm going to need you to, you know, use your words, say the words. <laughs> say what words. Please help me. <laughs> I'm it off until you used to burn a phone. Brave girl. Yeah, I'm not a good role model. I've been cleaning up your poop for the last 30 some years. So, dog, that's rich. Ah, uh, the truth's a mother dog, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's really what you think? That the whole time we're not each other? You've been cleaning up my mess. You got a different take on it? Oh, well, let's let's see. When I came here in 1995, you were just a bench woman nobody in a dumpy field office in S.H.I.E.L.D. Bench woman? You, what, did you have a different take on this? I was ascending the ranks. You didn't start ascending the ranks until me and 19 of my people signed on as your invisible spy network. You know, we fed you more dirt and intel then you could have uncovered on your own in a lifetime, so please. I mean, every time you were promoted inside S.H.I.E.L.D., we did that. Every terror attack you prevented, we did that. Every enemy you sabotaged and ally you leveraged with dirt no one else in the world had access to, we did that. You're a smart and capable guy, Fury. Nobody questions that, but you've got to admit, your life got a hell of a lot more charm once I came into it. And do you know something? I don't even need to hear a bloody thank you from you. It was my pleasure, mate. The least you can do is not rewrite history when the guy who helped write it with you that first time is sitting right next to you. What'd you stop for? We're here. Hey, Bob? Yeah, Bob. You remember Bob? The guy that's gonna launch a nuclear attack? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. No, that's because you were too busy riding the... Uh, we did that wave. You got any more abuse you want to hurl my way? Or are you ready to go in here and take care of Bob? And then I get to say, we did that. <laughs> we did that. Oh, I love that friendship. Oh, that's so good.
I, I love that about, about Sorry, Talos. I was busy kicking Bob's ass. Second floor, last door down the hall. Copy that. Where he didn't even, like, he saw the kids, like, I'm not gonna bother the kids, not him, we're after. No, this is too easy. Shit. You will look at me and you'll ask yourself, are you a leader of scrolls or a worst enemy? No, he just killed her. Nah, 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 that's BS. St. James Church, one hour. I need to speak to Graphic. Yeah, well, you're talking to me. Is that Rhodey? I believe they ended it right there. Wow, I need to speak to Gravik. Yeah, what are you talking to me? That sounded like Don Cheeto. Am I, am I losing my mind? Am I losing my marbles? <sighs> if Rhodey is a scroll, oh man. I love the, 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 the camaraderie between Talos and, and Fury. And even that quick scene between Talos and Gravik about how like you were a general one night and this is not who you were. And I'm wondering who, I mean, maybe it might have been Talos' wife, that the reason why he, he went down this way more. Not because of Fury. Wow. Part of me still kind of holds hope that, like, Mariho, Gaia, and maybe even Talos' wife are secretly hiding as backup in case stuff goes down bad versus Fury and his his operatives and, and Gravik and his, his uh, um, um, rebellion, to say another word. Um... But I love that that talk about the painting and and and, the, and Mrs. Fury being like, like you left twice, once voluntarily. Like, I'm me. Now I'm not. I'm not nobody. I'm not working for. I am me. We'll see you next week.